Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Jar Breen, and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyd, Hugh Dennis, and Stuart Francis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of former U.S. President Bill Clinton on a surprise visit to North Korea. But what does CSAR stand for? Is it communist suits are rubbish? <laughs> he looks well, like he should be sitting on the end of a pencil. <laughs> Perhaps he is. For the first half hour, Clinton thought that he'd met the janitor. <laughs> is it Korea spelt all wrong? <laughs> Is it, uh, is it Cigar Salesman and Rent Boy? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually their superhero names. It's Captain Shag and Admiral Romper Suit. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Clinton and Shag anyone, really? <laughs> <clears throat> is it Cautious Start at Rave? <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to be first. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. nobody wants to be first in the rain. Everybody's going. There's always one yeah. guy with a whistle. Come on, <laughs> come on out the floor. <laughs> Maybe it's what he packed: Charlie Zambuca, absinthe, and rubbers. <laughs> Is it, can't, yeah. can't stand any Renox. I like to Renox, but. Solo stuff? No! <laughs> uh, have you a correct answer? Is it, is it Clinton secures some things release? No, the R stands for reporters. Clinton saves American reporters. That's close enough. Well done, Ed. Right, that's right. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Clinton saves American reporters. This is a story that Bill Clinton flew to North Korea on a private mission, which successfully secured the release of female American journalists Laura Ling and Yuna Lee, who had been found guilty of entering North Korea illegally and sentenced to 12 years hard labor. So why did Bill go? Why did Bill get to Basically, that? he'd used up all the women currently in America, uh, and he's had to go abroad to round up any stragglers. He's <laughs> so wonderfully charismatic, because he's trying to... He's a bit like the wolf from Pulp Fiction. He's a little bit like the Fonz, but he's a massive dollop of quagmire from Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> you just imagine that as soon as he... You just imagine him stepping off the plane. I've got the ladies, giggity. <laughs> <laughs> The flight actually out of North Korea was delayed because Clinton went to duty free to get some cigars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look how cross Clinton is on that there. Al Gore's got the lady. Mm -hmm. Clinton's furious. So, to be honest, Clinton looks like he's rubbing his hands, going, "That's right, baby, get her ready." Ah, that's <laughs> Just how I taught you. Just how I taught you. He's warming them up like a safe cracker. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the two journalists in question, one of whom, Laura Ling, is the sister of Lisa Ling, uh, who is the host of the American version of Loose Women, which means essentially Ooh. this entire mission was held to rescue one of the Nolans. Uh, <laughs> And I could imagine that Kim Jong-un would be a huge fan of the Nolan as well. <laughs> I'm in the mood for dancing. <laughs> no man thing. Because I'm so lonely. Yeah. <laughs> All this talk about Clinton, you're thinking he was president for eight years, mm -hmm. he had loads of policies, he did one sexual misdemeanour, <laughs> and that's all anybody remembers. And then you think at this point, surely Gordon Brown, he should actually do a sexual misdemeanour. <laughs> Otherwise, people are just going to remember his actual policies. <laughs> I think it's a bit dodgy, though. That, that, like, Hillary Clinton, who's, you know, still actually, like, works Whose in job the government, that is, the yeah. Secretary of State, yeah. asked for these women to be released, was on the phone to North Korea, asked for these women to be released, and nothing doing. And it's like her husband just stepped in and went, Sorry, love, I'll handle this. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry your pretty little head about what I do with those nasty Korean men. <laughs> You do your secretary job. Apparently, as a, as a president, he's got to be called Mr. President forever, which has got to be particularly annoying for Hillary. Oh, I'm so sad I didn't get the nomination. I'm so sad I didn't get the nomination, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of names, Kim Jong-il, every time you hear that, it just sounds like he's describing himself. You know? yeah. Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-hungry. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Kim Jong-lonely. That's all you're thinking. Is there any danger that Bill Clinton only went because the words Pyongyang sounds like Nicola? <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for the girls, because uh, they, they got to share a long-haul flight with Bill Clinton, and then they fly into renowned womanizer Bob Hope Airport. <laughs> Who was their baggage handler? Jude Law? <laughs> Great. 
you know, the, re the reason everybody's worried about North Korea, though, and what they were hoping that Bill Clinton would be talking about, is their nuclear weapons program, isn't it? Do you know what their missile is called? Do you know what the North Korean missile is called? It's called the No Dong missile. <laughs> Every time. The thing is, why and his problem is, it can't stay up long enough. Ah. <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? That's the point with North Korea. You know, they're not really a threat, are they? You know, no. all these missiles go up and they sort of, you know, explode about three seconds after takeoff. You think the biggest threat from North Korea probably is to North Korea itself? Isn't it? <laughs> well, funny. That's exactly what they want you to think. <laughs> yeah. Who are they? The North Koreans. Yeah. <laughs> but Pete, all right, steady you two. Um, <laughs> sexual tension in this room. Uh, no, um, it's, the, it's the younger James May who's yeah. getting me going. <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a dictator, he's not going to have understood Clinton and all this sort of stuff that he's got to put up with. What's, what's that, Clinton? You nearly got impeached for having a blowjob? I'm having a blowjob right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a tiny gymnast in my trouser legs. <laughs> the thing is, it's a very good thing that Berlusconi and Clinton never served at the same time, because they'd be holding the G8 in places like Spearmint Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Why, by the way, is why we're on American politics, why is a controversy at the moment over oh, Barack Obama? It's unbelievable. Uh, Barack Obama is trying to get free health care for uh, 46 million people in America, and this has made him unpopular in America, which is incredible, isn't it? Well, well, really, those 46 million people are all dicks. Well, <laughs> you know, well Ed's, Ed's become a Republican. It's <laughs> not a disaster for Obama, exactly, is it? Because he's got an approval rating of 50%. Yes. Gordon Brown would kill for an approval rating of 50%. If Gordon Brown discovered a cure for cancer, actually baked everybody individually a cake, and discovered oil under his own house, he would still have a popularity rating on a par with Gary Glitter. <laughs> It is generally a case that they think that Brown, as we were discussing, can do nothing, right? I mean, Brown is currently in the Lake District. At some stage during his holiday, he will find a chain and go, oh, what is this? Pull it. And the Lake District will drain out. Uh, uh, <laughs> how true. lucky he true. is. Right, yeah, wow. probably. I feel sorry for Obama because he's still got to fight the innate racism of Americans, hasn't he? I mean, do you see his first speech when he got made president and they put all that bulletproof glass up in front of him? I think that shows you how racist America still is. Just because he's black doesn't mean he's going to shoot anybody. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> Obama's, Obama's got in, he's had a look at the economy, he's had a look at what his general public are actually like, and he's got a new slogan, turns out we can't. <laughs> 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 uh, bring it back to here, actually. Who's running the country at the moment? Oh. Mandelson, Peter yeah. Mandelson, yeah. Darth Mandelson. Yes. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what nobody ever says about him? He's gay and he's a lord. He's a gay lord. He's <laughs> <laughs> all there. To be honest. He's, he's been running the country, but he's been in Corfu. Then we're getting handed over to Alistair Darlin, to Jack Straw. We're like the school hamster. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Alistair Darlin leaves our gate open and we're found dead under a bookcase. <laughs> Basically, we're two car crashes and a vomiting virus away from Andy Townsend running the country. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Townsend. I've got the vomiting virus, so I'm handing over to Chris Ekabusi. <laughs> No, nobody's running the country. And the papers have roughly the same tone you have, which is, nobody's running the country! <laughs> as if the country is heading towards rocks uh, and somebody has to steer it away. In the last month, right, the FTSE has gone up 10% since they all went on holiday, the weather is better, and the football starts at the weekend. So, frankly, I think it's working out fine without them in charge. Hey, get rid of them all, kill them all, install the clangers, at least we'll get soup. <laughs> 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 There were was, was some beautiful photos of Mandelson on holiday that were just so lovely. Proper British man red. Did you see any of those? It looked like he'd been left on a George Foreman grill. And <laughs> some of the photos of him as well, the clothes he's wearing, he looked like he'd just been fried and then just flung into Matalan. You see him sort of <laughs> walking along like that. It's some of the most Not only fair. did he go to Corfu, on his way home he stopped off for two days to visit his parents in Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> How terrifying would it be for Mandelson to stay in your house? Have you seen Peter today? No, I don't know. He dematerialised and then fled into the air vents. <laughs> I think if you want him to appear, you have to stamp twice and say his real name. <laughs> <laughs> when, 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 Man, when Mandelson leaves, there's a small woman come into your house and go, the house is clean. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine him turning up at 
on your holiday. Mm. Imagine seeing Mandelson in the beach. There's people on the banana boat look like they're having a good time. Have them assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> then bring me an enormous vibrating egg. <laughs> the reason, basically, that he's running the country, isn't it, is because Parliament's on holiday. The politicians have got an 82-day holiday. Now, that should be plenty of time, you'd have thought, to clean their own moat and work out exactly which house they, in fact, lived in. <laughs> at the end of that round, at the end of that round, the boys call it Russell Ed and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Excess Gaggage. This game <laughs> involves Ed, Stuart, Andy and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first topic is global warming. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> Cheryl Crow, she's gone into the debate. She wants us to save natural resources by apparently using only one sheet of toilet paper per visit. Now, let's face it, sometimes that's just not feasible, is it? <laughs> but ever since I found that out, part of me's there thinking, each time I use more than one sheet, I've let Cheryl Crow down. <laughs> and part of me's thinking, oh, I'd never want to go out with Cheryl Crow. <laughs> she's a toilet paper Nazi. <laughs> and half the time, she's probably got a dirty arse. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is celebrity. Who wants to come in on that? I would take that. Ed. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'll take celebrity because, you know, I, I suppose, I, I kind of, I'm a celebrity. You know, I've got the sort of... I'm on telly, occasionally. <laughs> I'm on it right now. So that's fair enough, <laughs> you know. But I'm not, like, I'm not like famous, famous. I'm, I've got the sort of halfway house. I'm not like... Household name, but I'm not nobody. I'm sort of like that bloke. What's his name? You know, and people say, Oh, I saw that Ed Byrne on telly, and the other person will go, Who? You know, oh, you know, the Irish guy, comedian. What, the big guy with the bald head? No, not that bloke. <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird when you got that sort of in between thing, because, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I get a lot, particularly in England, is I get people coming up to me to tell me that they don't know who I am. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Which to me seems a bizarre thing to cross a room to tell somebody, but you would be alarmed how often someone will come up to me in a pub or a club and go, Apparently you're on the television? I've never heard of you. <laughs> really? My family used to own a dog called Layla. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were playing swap information neither of us give the shit about. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in Ireland, I'm a bit more well-known. So in Ireland, I get abuse. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed. OK, that leads with Stuart and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is the royal family. Prince Harry's pretty spectacular, isn't he? Um, he's wonderful. The sun really can't make their mind up, because one minute the sun is a war hero, next minute, racist! Make your mind up. We don't mind him killing foreigners, but don't call them names. That <laughs> appears to be the way they operate, you know? But there's something wonderful about Prince Harry. He must have a weekly show called These Are The Things I've Done. And we'd watch it, wouldn't we? Yeah, a couple of years ago, man, I shaved my pubes, put it on a swan, big wow. Next week... <laughs> Next week, I'm going to light my farts and fondle a gibbon. Come on over! <laughs> we love him because he's ferociously stupid. Think about it. He had a hundred grand spent on his education, the finest education money could buy. He went to Eton, he got two A-levels. One's an E in geography, one's a B in art. Can you imagine that? Your dad has spent a hundred grand on your education. <laughs> I've done a drawing and I sort of know what a hill is. You know what I mean? Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, Russell. OK, sure, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And it's relationships. I like my women the way I like my coffee, picked by migrant workers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a girlfriend. I've been going out with my girlfriend for... sex. <laughs> my girlfriend actually thinks I'm incapable of being faithful. My wife, on the other hand, <laughs> hates that joke. And I'm not ashamed of my wife. If you don't believe me, go to the car and ask her. <laughs> ask her loud. She's in the boot. 
Is my wife dissatisfied with my body? A tiny part of me says yes. <laughs> I was previously married. I married way too young. A Chinese girl, that's her name. I remember... <laughs> Way too young was so beautiful. Fab Cook, too. That was her cousin. She was hot, too. <laughs> it was a good-looking family. It's thought that most men's sexual fantasy is to be involved in a threesome. And I thought it was mine until recently. I was involved in a threesome. And I'll be honest with you, my friends, I didn't like it. Halfway through, I stopped and said, listen, Rick, Jim. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Stuart, which category would you like? Can we have home news, please? Okay, home news it is. The answer is, once a minute. What's the question? Is it, how often when I walk into a playground with this beard, does a mother pick up a child and throw a shoe at me? <laughs> is it, what would be the worst misprinted dosage on a pack of laxatives? <laughs> Well, is it how often do men self-check their own testicles? <laughs> is it, to be honest, it's a lot more than that. Is it, I've always wondered what you were doing. <laughs> We're still there. <laughs> is it how often does Yuri Geller keep mentioning the fact that he's Michael Jackson's friend? <laughs> That's it. Is it if you... If you put Wayne Rooney on a perch next to a mirror, how often would he peck his own reflection? <laughs> Is it, how often does David Cameron point in a mirror and go, looking good, PM? <laughs> Is it on their annual trip to Blackpool, how often does the British Claustrophobia Society have to stop the minibus? <laughs> Why would they book a minibus? Surely. They just surely never they'd learn. Slash out, wouldn't they? <laughs> Two CGs at least, for God's sake. Is it how talk? often do Dara and Andy gaze at my hair? <laughs> how often does the average iPhone user take it out and fiddle with the poxy thing? <laughs> Very good. I'm, that's really good. I think, I think I'm going to tweet that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to move it on to another oh, no, correct answer. Is it how often does Kerry Katona ovulate? <laughs> I can't believe you, you fooled me with the <laughs> I know the correct answer. <laughs> oh, the, the oldest answer. trick yeah. in the book. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give the you actual a... answer, I think, is yes. to do with surveillance, isn't it? It is to do with it's surveillance. It's how many yes. times. Is there a request put in for surveillance by a authority or something? That's absolutely, that's, that's close enough. You. I'll give you the exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> the actual question specifically I was looking for is on average, how often do public bodies request access to private phone and email records? This week, a report by the Interception of Communications <laughs> Commissioner, an actual job, showed that authorities, including councils and police, made over half a million requests to access private phone and email records in 2008. That's 1,400 requests a day, an increase of 44% in two years ago, although actually not an increase on last year. So who is doing the snooping? This, is there a dude called the Interception that, of... The Interception of <laughs> Communications <laughs> Commissioner? Imagine his wife trying to have an affair. Is it possible? <laughs> I bet you she's having an affair with a guy she has to signal to with the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> He's out on a rowboat somewhere. Okay, you'll come home and go, I, darling, darling, I'm the Interception of Communications Commissioner. And she'd go, move to the secure line. <laughs> Do you know, what it's, you know what it's come to, right? One in 78 people are being surveyed in some way by the government. That means that maybe four of tonight's audience are being surveyed by the government, or to be more realistic, three of tonight's audience and me. <laughs> if the government are watching me, I would like to say this. Could you please tell me where I was on Saturday night? I'd really love those trousers back. <laughs> the issue is that it, the CCTV footage and covert police covert police work as well, yeah. is being used to, to, you know, for, for relatively minor offences, to bust people for dog fouling and fly tipping, when it's really, you know, it's supposed to be used to make late night clip shows on ITV4. <laughs> the irony of it, though, is that the person who's really complained about it is uh, Chris Hume. <laughs> <laughs>
of the Liberal Democrats. Yeah. So he must be so pissed off because there are thousands of cameras anywhere and still no one knows who he is. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, I'm Hoon said, Hoon said uh, the government forgets that George Orwell's 1984 was a warning oh, and not a blueprint. To be honest, Which you so. wouldn't even get away with that sentence in your GCSE, let alone <laughs> as a grown up. <laughs> I feel yeah. so sorry. Animal Farm was an allegory, not an actual description of a farm. Yeah. <laughs> it's only their own money, they're, aren't they? They're offering money for you to report on somebody who's, who's left their rubbish out in the wrong yeah. day or something. I think that's a good thing. If they're offering £100 to report on fly tipping, imagine what they're going to pay me to tell them that my next door neighbour's buried his wife in the garden. <laughs> Probably more than he paid me to kill her. <laughs> I'm going to spy on my neighbours and use the money to upgrade my night vision goggles. <laughs> It's, it's a honour. It genuinely is. It's, 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 it's Waltham Forest Council. Now, admittedly, if you hear Waltham Forest Council, you think, you think of a magical council of elves <laughs> and, and owls who gather in the middle of Waltham Forest and go, the squirrels are upset. What shall we do to help them? But no, it's a real place. Waltham Forest Council said it's £100 for the initial information if it leads to uh, a, a, an arrest, £150 for a conviction, and £500 if they serve the... F they've staggered it. So basically, you can go to court and go, woo! as people get dumb <laughs> for literally, you know, cha-ching at the back of the court. They're going to find you, aren't they? It's really easy to tell when someone's come into a sum like a hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. Is that a swatch you're wearing there? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's a Big Mac and fries you've gone for. <laughs> it was a great story that they were, uh, they were going to pay kids to spy on antisocial neighbours, which is fantastic, isn't it? An eight-year-old. This is DCI Luke. I've just seen a man draw a cock on a bus stop. <laughs> I am proceeding on Heelys. <laughs> Russell, did DC Luke get a good look at this guy who drew the cock? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that we have 20% of the world's CCTV cameras in Britain? You know that? No. Now pretty much the only place you can be sure that nobody's watching you is on Justin Lee Collins' chat show. <laughs> help anything. Nobody's going to help you if they see you on CCTV. If a gang of teenagers attack you, all it means, CCTV, is that your murder will eventually be narrated by Danny Dyer on Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> there was a great story the other day. Do you see this? About, um, apparently they're putting security cameras in wheelie bins to see what people are putting in their bins. And people are outraged, but... Don't get outraged, just get even, because that implies somebody's watching that. So, like, hire a clown just to sit in there, just with a little note that goes, I bet you hate your job, just... <laughs> Just all day until his mind is broken. You can buy, you can buy a puppet of Oscar the Grouch. Well, I'll do and that. Just do that. How do you like, know that? To be honest, yeah, I reckon yeah. you could get Les Dennis to do that. I was going to say, I just say the Oscar plans better because he's known for living in bins. But actually, Les Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's really no, funny also, though because when you do other kind of interviews, that I did Gabby Logan the other day. The show, come on, and uh, she said, "Yeah, your mate Frankie said that I look like a transvestite," uh -huh. and then you find yourself going. Yeah, I'm not his brother. <laughs> <laughs> what was really great, well, the poor woman, she was flicking through late one night just to see what was on telly. She flicked on the exact moment, apparently, that you went, yeah, she looks like a transvestite. Just at that exact I bet moment. she snapped the remote control at a breadstick <laughs> in her giant man hands. <laughs> Cross him! The end of that round. <laughs> the points go to Frankie Hughes Stewart. <laughs> Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios. We'd love to see the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is bad things to hear at the psychiatrist. I don't want you to think of me as a psychiatrist. I want you to think of me as a mental patient who killed the psychiatrist before you got here. <laughs> <laughs> you think you are a potato? On the couch, please. <laughs> Welcome to your first session of Freudian analysis. What seems to be the penis? <laughs> well, you say that you're paranoid, but I have a report here that says you looked very relaxed in the bath this morning. <laughs> oh, yes. I can see why you fancy your mother. She's something of a fox. <laughs> I see you've tried to commit suicide five times. Your dad was right. You are useless. 
You've been coming here for six months to talk about your trust issues. Well, we've been filming you for Britain's nuttiest bastards. <laughs> Yes, I think your parents caused you problems from a very early age, Clitorina. <laughs> your thoughts that you're horrifically unattractive are all in your mind, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> okay, word association. I'm going to say a word, and I want you to say the first thing that pops into your breasts. <laughs> Wow, that's really interesting. Do you mind if I use some of this stuff as lyrics from my band? <laughs> <laughs> you have emotional problems and a below average IQ. I'm prescribing Hollyoaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a classic dream. It means you're a paedophile. <laughs> I want you to go to your happy place. Judging by the size of you, that's probably Greg's. <laughs> Hypnosis could certainly help with your intimacy issues. While you were unconscious, I rested my nuts on your head. <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear in a TV talent show. 2007's winner Leon Jackson is still selling records in his Saturday job at HMV Paisley. <laughs> of course it's not a freak show. Now get your Siamese twin asses on that stage and you <laughs> nail Papa Don't Preach. <laughs> Two crosses light up and the crowd cheers as Stavros Flatley are crucified in flames. Hello, I'm Rita. I'm 87 and I'm going to do Keep You Up With Me Boobs. Here we go. <laughs> hey! I'm like bloody Ronaldo! Look at me go! OK, you're right. I don't really have any talent. But I'm kind of cute. I'm Kylie Minogue's sister, for God's sake. <laughs> What a hilarious singing dog Susan Boyle is. <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you said you were going to saw a woman in half, I thought you were a magician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my family aren't going to believe it when they see me on TV. They think I'm dead. Hello, I'm Susan Boyle, and I would like to say hello to my brother, Frankie. <laughs> Susan Boyle is not related to me. None of my relatives will ever manage to chisel their way out of that cellar. <laughs> I am an escapologist. Today, I have escaped from Broadmoor. <laughs> Next on ITV4, it's ITV3's coverage of ITV2's making of documentary about the coverage on ITV4. <laughs> Hello, I'm Billy Cock, and this is my partner, Brian Balls, and together we are... Billy and Brian. <laughs> Behold, my magical racist cat. They come over here, they steal our bloody jobs. <laughs> I'm not having it. <laughs> that was a beautiful song until you fucking sang it. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point for the Russell, Ed and Andy. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Sure Francis. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Feel free to laugh and point, but no egg throwing just yet as Clive Anderson reveals the funny side of politics next here on BBC Two.